Shalom. This week's Torah portion of Parshat Vayetze opens as Yaakov begins his journey to Padan Aram, to the family of his uncle Lavan. Ostensibly, there are two compelling reasons for him to travel. One, his mother knew prophetically that Esav was angry over the blessing. Esav wants to kill Yaakov, so Rebekah wants Yaakov to go away for a while, until Esav cools down. And secondly, at the end of last week's portion of Parshat Toldot, Yitzchak also commanded his son Yaakov to travel to Rebekah's family, there to marry a girl from the house of Lavan. Our portion begins in chapter 28 and verse 10. We read, And Yaakov departed from Beersheba and went towards Haran. He encountered the place and spent the night there, because the sun had set. He took from the stones of the place, which he arranged around his head, and lay down in that place. Every word in these short verses is replete with meaning. He encountered the place and spent the night there because the sun had set. We learn that God wanted Yaakov to arrive and pray at the site of the Holy Temple, and thus he caused the sun to set early so that Yaakov would tarry there. And the twelve stones which he took and placed around his head were from the very altar upon which Avraham had bound his father Yitzchak on this very spot. There are so many fundamental Torah ideas in our parsha, but today I would like to focus on only one concept, and that is the meaning of the ladder that Jacob saw in his dream. Torah tells us, and he dreamed, and behold, a ladder was set earthward, and its top reached heavenward, and behold, angels of God were ascending and descending on it, and behold, Hashem was standing over him. There are many questions about this vision of the ladder and the angels ascending and descending upon it. What was the purpose of the ladder? What is the significance of the angels and this idea of their ascending and descending? And what does it really mean that Hashem stood over him? Our sages share many ideas. Midrash Rabbah, cited by Rashi, describes the ladder as a spiritual transition point between the land of Israel and the lands beyond its borders. It states that the angels that had accompanied him in the land would not go out of the land, so they ascended to heaven, while the angels assigned to outside the land descended to accompany him beyond this point. But now open up your heart. One of the most important principles in understanding Torah's lessons about the forefathers is known in Hebrew as the principle of ma'ase avot siman lebanim, that what happened, what befell but what transpired for the forefathers is a sign for their children. These great men were prototypes through whom Hashem set historical processes into motion. They forged a path and their lives are a blueprint for our own. The word sulam, meaning ladder, as it appears here in Parshat Vayetze, is written with the letters Samach, Lamed, and Mem. In a study on our Parsha, the Midrash Rabbah points out that the same letters that make up the word sulam can be rearranged to spell the word, the word semel, a symbol. With this succinct comment, our sages draw our attention to the multiple levels of meaning of Yaakov's dream, and they encourage us to find meaning for our own lives in Yaakov's ladder. Torah is for all time, and so where do we fit in within Yaakov's dream? So open up your heart in the deepest way. Maimonides, the Rambam, writing in his famed Guide for the Perplexed, as well as many of the great Hasidic masters, they view Yaakov's dream as a sort of guide, a program for spiritual elevation. The latter alludes to our striving to connect between two levels of reality, between this lower, impermanent, impermanent material world and the upper eternal world of spirit. Both realities are powered by and ruled over by the eternal God, and his presence permeates both. Thus the Rambam writes, And behold, Hashem was standing over him. This teaches us that one who properly ascends this ladder will assuredly reach the one who stands everlasting at the top. The word sulam, ladder, contains the gematria, the same numerical value as the word Sinai. At the giving of the Torah at Mount Sinai, heaven and earth were connected in an example of perfect quantum entanglement between the spiritual and the material dimensions. In a sense, Torah itself is the latter. The latter backslash Sinai dynamic alludes to our capacity to connect these two levels within our human reality. We do have the ability to live in both worlds, despite the apparent contradictions. The soul is a spark of God within us, higher than even the essence of the angels, but the aspect of our material body 
is material, physical. Our job description as human beings upon this earth, our life's work, called our avodah, our service of God in this world, is to connect these two levels of reality. Throughout our lives, in everything we do and in every situation we encounter, we are firmly planted on the earth with our feet on the ground. As people, we serve God through action, trying our best to bring tangible goodness and change for the better into the world. At the same time, our heads must be in heaven, nurturing and developing our spiritual essence and never losing sight of the higher vision. The ladder of life presents us with the greatest, most constant, and most urgent challenge of our lives, to be connectors between the materialism of this world and the true spiritual, spiritual reality of existence. The Hebrew words, Sulam Mutzav Artsa, Virosho Magia Hashemaima, mean literally, the ladder was set earthward, and its top reached heavenward. That ladder starts down here with a man, but its root, its origin, is in heaven, and it spirals down to earth. Man is the root of everything. He holds the key. Thus, the angels are described as ascending and descending in that order, because man's task is to lift up all of creation from bottom to top. In a teaching about the power of prayer, the Holy Balatanya states that a person has to start from the bottom and work his way all the way up to reach heaven, to reach the echad, the unity of God. And through man's achievement, the angels ascend and descend through him. He is the ladder that connects heaven and earth. All of creation is elevated when a person ascends to the level of clinging to God, and all of creation plummets downwards, God forbid, when man descends. And it's deeper still. In his dream, the verse tells us Yaakov sees Hashem standing, in Hebrew, nitzav, standing over him. How is this manifest? Clearly, Yaakov did not see God in any physical sense. This was a spiritual experience. He was illuminated by the power and light of the Divine Presence. Now, there are numerous Hebrew words that can be used to describe standing, but in Hebrew, everything means something. And Torah's divine authorship broadcasts nuances of meaning in every word and letter. Whenever a form of the word nitzav is used for standing, it conveys the concept of ruach hakodesh, a godly prophetic light that is being revealed. The angels who stood over Avraham back in Parshat Vayera were described with the same word. Thus, the very wording of the verse testifies that the connection represented by the latter becomes a conduit of godly blessing. When a person succeeds in, con in connecting the dimension of the earthiness of his life to the soul of his life, to the soul of everything, to the inner spiritual dimension, to the godliness, to the aspect of Hashem in everything, then he himself is transformed into a conduit. He becomes a pipeline to bring blessing into the world. So open up your heart in the deepest way ever. The Holy Rav Chaim of Velozhen in Nefesh Chaim writes that this great secret is explicit in the words of verse 12, which state, And behold, angels of God were ascending and descending in it. And the Hebrew word is bo, usually translated as in it in the latter, to reflect the simple meaning. But really, the word bo here literally means not in it, but in him. Yaakov himself is the latter. This is the role of a human being, to stand firmly on the ground while connecting heaven and earth. We are the latter for the angels to traverse through man. All of creation is completed. And again, there are so many levels of meaning. One of our sages' most well-known teachings is that through the imagery of the ladder and the angels ascending and descending, the Holy One, blessed be He, showed Yaakov a symbolic portrayal of the stages of future history. He showed him a vision of the various exiles that his children would have to endure. In this view, the angels represented the ministering angels of the kingdoms that would rule on earth and subjugate his children in exile. In his dream, Yaakov beheld the ministering angel, that is, the angelic chief of the nation of Babylon, ascend and descend, followed by that of Media and Greece and Edom, Rome. The Midrash Psikta de Rav Kahana adds a startling insight. Hashem said to Yaakov, now you ascend the ladder. But Yaakov was afraid to ascend, saying, just as others have ascended only to descend, perhaps I would also only rise to descend. So I will not ascend so as not to have to descend. And God assured him that he and his children would not descend. But still Yaakov was afraid and would not climb up. So open up your heart deeper than ever before in your whole life to the words of this Midrash. The Holy One, blessed be he, then responded to Yaakov. 
If you had only believed in me and climbed up, you would have never you never would have experienced exile. But since you did not go up and you did not believe, your children will have to serve those empires. Yaakov was frightened and asked, Master of the universe, will it be that way forever? And Hashem comforted Yaakov and told him, In the end, I will redeem them. As the prophet Jeremiah expresses in chapter 30, Do not fear, my servant Jacob, and do not be afraid, Israel. For behold, I am saving you from distant places and your descendants from the land of their captivity. But this homiletical teaching conveys a staggering idea. Hashem said to Yaakov, Climb up to me. If only you would have believed me and taken this leap of faith, everything could have been different. You need to know and believe that I have your back. A ladder is not a place for staying put. It's not a chair. It's not a comfortable place to sit. It's used for either going up or going down. Our goal is to constantly rise in ascending levels of love and fear of God, good deeds and acts of kindness. And you have to proceed carefully on a ladder, slowly, from rung to rung, especially as you start to go higher. At times, you feel something holding you back from the next step and you have to pause. You hesitate before climbing higher. But when we overcome this hesitation and it passes, then the achievement of climbing higher is even greater. Each of us is on this ladder and each of us is this ladder, sometimes moving up, sometimes hesitating, or even losing our footing and falling back a few steps. But even falling is a part of our ascent, called by our holy sages a descent for the purpose of rising up. When we realize and learn to truly internalize with faith that every challenge along the way is for the ultimate good, even in the most difficult situations, then we can begin to get a glimpse, however fleeting, we can start to see who it is that's standing over us at the top of the ladder. Thank you for joining us for this week's Jerusalem Lights Torah portion. As you can see, the scenery is changing. Hope you like our office. May we all progressively and steadily ascend the ladder and merit to connect heaven and earth, always remembering who is standing over us at the top of the ladder. Shabbat Shalom.